Hello, my name is Tara Desporte and I'm a postdoc in the Brody Lab. And today I'll be talking to you about modeling human disease using zebrafish. Measured on this dime is about a 10 year supply of vitamin B12 with the current recommended daily allowance of about 2.54 micrograms for humans. B12 plays an essential role in two of our metabolic pathways and we get it from consuming animal products in our diet. B12 deficiency causes a number of familiar illnesses such as anemia. And as we age and lose the ability to absorb B12, we become susceptible to a number of neurocognitive pathologies that are hard to diagnose. So how do we absorb it? Humans have three B12 transporters that look like this, that move B12 from the food we eat, making it available for our cells to use. Zebrafish also have three B12 transporters. One looks like the human B12 transporter, but the other two look like this. You can appreciate that a large portion of the protein was missing, but it still bound B12 with high affinity in our binding assays. Something's fishy. And were these proteins metabolically relevant? From the literature, we know that early development has a high metabolic demand. And my lab just discovered these novel B12 transporters. So I wanted to know what would be the effects on zebrafish development, if any, if I were to create a knockout strain of these genes. And so using the nose to tail length of the zebrafish as a proxy measurement for growth, what I found was fish that had a double mutation were on average much smaller when compared to their siblings that had no mutations or a single mutation suggesting not only was B12 important for zebrafish development, but these proteins played an important role in moving it around the zebrafish body. Moving forward, I hope to build on this project by using CRISPR-Cas technologies to create the first known triple knockout of all B12 transporters in zebrafish. This, I predict, would produce a severe B12 pathology. Thank you.